Okay, hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about how we can change the OSPF metric. Now, the metric used in OSPF is cost, and that is derived from bandwidth. So, if we want to influence how a router chooses its best path to any given destination, we have to change the cost. We have three ways to do that, and that's what we're going to cover here. Now, the first one is very straightforward we can change the actual OSPF cost explicitly on a given interface. So this is a per interface approach, change the cost. The second option is also on a per interface basis, but here it's, it's kind of done indirectly. We influence the cost by changing the bandwidth. And there are some fine details we're going to cover in this approach, because it's not as straightforward as it sounds. So those both are interface approaches. The last one affects how OSPF calculates costs for all interfaces. And here we're going to come across the term the reference bandwidth. And we'll get into the details of how that works and how we can change it as well. Okay? Let's start with the OSPF cost approach. Each interface has an OSPF cost and that is determined by the router automatically and again it's based on the bandwidth of that particular interface. If we want to change this the command we want to use is IP OSPF cost. So if we take a look at our lab we have a single serial interface between these two routers. Let's say this is a T1. The automatic OSPF cost is 65. But then let's say we provision a second link. It's a fast Ethernet link. It has considerably more bandwidth. The cost here, by default in OSPF, would turn out to be 1. So if we had learned two routes from router B, router A could choose to send it over the fast Ethernet or over the serial link. Here it's a no-brainer. It would choose the fast Ethernet because it's considerably lower in cost. What we're going to do is, just to uh, really illustrate this, is we'll go ahead and we'll look at the routes and then we'll uh, change the cost on the fast Ethernet to something much higher than the serial and then that way we'll see how OSPF then chooses to use the serial interface. Okay, let's take a look at the routes we have on router A. Show IP route OSPF, just the OSPF routes. You can see we're learning two routes from router B and they're both via fast Ethernet 00. So let's take a look at that particular interface. Show IP OSPF interface, FA00, and you can see here the OSPF cost is 1. Now, if we take a look at the serial interface, here you can see the cost is 65. The cost wraps around to the second line, so it's a little bit harder, harder to see, but there it is. So that explains why we're choosing fast Ethernet over the serial. Well, let's go ahead and change that just to illustrate this. We go into interface mode and the command IP OSPF cost and the parameter you can see the range of costs you can put in here. Now it only has to be uh, higher than the current cost of the serial interface which is 65. So if we were to make this 100 or 75 or 66 it would work. So let's actually show that. We'll make this 66 and it'll take a second for OSPF to go ahead and recalculate but let's take a look at our route table now and there you go both of these same routes are still there but now we're learning them and preferring them via the serial interface and if we take a look at the OSPF cost on FA00 you can see it's now 66 Okay, so it's a very straightforward method of changing the cost on interfaces, and by doing that, we affect which route is chosen. Okay, let's move on to the second option we have to influencing the OSPF metrics, and here we look at the interface bandwidth. Now, specifically, when we talk about the bandwidth of an interface, we're talking about how that interface is perceived by the routing protocols. We're not actually talking about how it functions. Okay, so when we show you these examples and we talk about changing the bandwidth, we're not actually changing how the interface functions, only how the routing protocol sees that interface. 
I'll give you an example. Let's say we have a 100 megabit per second uh, fast Ethernet interface. If we change the bandwidth to, let's say, 10 megabits per second, that interface is still going to function at 100 megabits per second. However, the routing protocols are going to look at that interface and only see it functioning at 10 megabits per second. So what happens is you've lowered the bandwidth, which means the cost is going to be recalculated to something higher in this particular example, and that's how you, you, you influence the routing protocol. So it's an indirect approach to changing cost by changing bandwidth, and that's what cost is based on. Keep in mind, the command itself works in kilobits per second, and the actual command is quite simple. It's the bandwidth command, and we have to be inside the interface when we make that change. So in our lab, we're going to have the serial and the fast Ethernet interface again, and the default bandwidth on the serial interface is 1,536 kilobits per second. And on the fast Ethernet, it's quite a bit more, 100,000 kilobits per second. So what we're going to do is make this bandwidth much lower. And by doing that, this cost is going to increase with the goal of having router A prefer the serial interface. Okay, let's start off by taking a look at our routes in OSPF. And you can see we have two still from router B and we're preferring Fast Ethernet 00, zero for both of them. I want to show you the OSPF information for FA00. Zero zero. You can see here the cost is one. And then let's just go ahead and take a look at FA00 zero zero itself. And here you can see the bandwidth is referenced, 100,000 kilobits per second, which equals 100 megabits per second. All right, so let's change this now in configuration into the interface subcommands. And the bandwidth command has the parameter kilobits per second for the value. Now the serial interface we said is 1,536 kilobits per second. So let's just make this 1,000 kilobits per second. Now, let's take a look first at the interface again. Show interface FA00. You can see the bandwidth has changed. Bandwidth 1,000 kilobits. Again, remember, it's functioning, though, at 100 megabits per second. And then let's take a, uh, a look again at the OSPF information for FA00. Remember last time the cost was 1? Well, now you can see the cost is 100. The reason being, the bandwidth went down, the cost went up. It's that simple. So let's again take a look at our routing table for OSPF. And here you can see both of our routes are now preferred from serial 000 because it has the lower cost. OK? OK, now let's look at our third method of affecting the cost in OSPF. And this is known as the reference bandwidth. And with this approach, we can change the values that are actually used by OSPF when it determines costs for all interfaces. Now, OSPF uses a formula when it does come up with the different costs. And this is it. It's the reference bandwidth divided by the interface bandwidth. So the reference bandwidth is measured in megabits per second. And the default value is 100. So if we were to look at this formula for a fast Ethernet interface, we have our reference bandwidth of 100, and then we divide that by any particular interface. If we're going to look at a fast Ethernet interface, which is also 100 megabits per second, the cost for that interface is going to equal 1. Now, we can change this default value, and that's what we're going to look at. The command we use for that is the auto cost reference bandwidth command. Let's take a look at the lab. We have our fast Ethernet interface still on the top, but this time we've gotten rid of the serial and we've put in a gigabit interface. The bandwidth is going to be 1 million kilobits per second for the gigabit and 100,000 kilobits per second for the fast Ethernet. And here's what looks strange. Each of these interfaces has a cost of 1 in OSPF. 
But that shouldn't be because gigabit is much uh, higher in bandwidth than a fast Ethernet interface. So why is that? Well, this leads us into why people actually use this command. Because with the default value of 100, when you divide 100 either by 100 or 1000, you're going to get 1. It rounds it up a little bit for the gigabit interface. So these two interfaces have a default value of 1 under the default uh, reference bandwidth configuration of 100. What we're going to do is we're going to change our reference bandwidth to 1000. That way, when OSPF makes its calculations, the cost on the fast Ethernet is actually going to change to 10. And the gigabit Ethernet is going to remain at 1. This way, OSPF is, can now take advantage of the uh, higher bandwidth of the gigabit interface and, and then prefer that interface when it compares routes to the fast Ethernet interface. Okay, so that's, that's a common cause of why people initiate this command. It's a best practice to, to do this in order to uh, get the most out of your different uh, speed links. And it's also a best practice to have all of the routers on the network have the same reference bandwidth. So don't just change this for one router, change it on all of them. That way they all see the nuances between a fast Ethernet, a gigabit Ethernet, and then even a 10 gigabit Ethernet. So on router A, let's take a look at Ethernet, fast Ethernet 00, zero and you can see the cost is 1. Let's change that. In configuration mode, we have to go into the OSPF process. And the command, auto cost, reference bandwidth, and let me show you the parameter. Here are, here's the range of values you can put in there, and it states very clearly that this is in megabits per second. You're going to hear people emphasizing this, and the reason being is this command uses megabits per second, and the bandwidth command uses kilobits per second. And oftentimes, people c forget to convert the two to use the same units when they go ahead and apply the formula of the reference bandwidth divided by the interface bandwidth. So make sure you do that, otherwise you're going to get incorrect results. Now here, we're going to change it from 100 to 1000. And look, it even, it even gives us a nice little reminder. Please ensure reference bandwidth is consistent across all routers. Now, if we take a look again at the fast Ethernet interface, look at the cost. The cost is now 10. Okay, so by changing that value in the formula, all of the fast Ethernet interfaces now have a more appropriate cost and when this would be compared to a gigabit or a 10 gigabit interface they would not be as uh, preferred, they would not look as good because now they're they're taken for what they are. Okay? Okay, let's summarize what we covered. We now know that we can change the cost directly on an interface by using the IP OSPF cost command. We can also, while still in the interface, change the bandwidth if we want to. So this is an indirect approach to changing cost, and the bandwidth command is used, and remember the unit of that value is in kilobits per second. So if you change the bandwidth, the cost changes because cost is based on bandwidth. Again, keep in mind that doesn't affect how the interface actually functions, only how the routing protocol views that interface. And then finally, we looked at the auto cost reference bandwidth command which has a unit in megabits per second and that's why we have to make a conversion when you, you look at the formula this will change the calculations that OSPF uses by default for all interfaces so we said the reference bandwidth divided by the interface bandwidth will give you the actual cost so the reference bandwidth default value is 100 and if you were to put in an interface bandwidth, remember to convert it to megabits per second. Okay, so that's it. That is how we can go ahead and change the OSPF metrics. Thanks for watching.